Trap Pro Rugs is the story of an extraordinary founder who redefined the entire hand-woven carpet industry with a clear insurgent mission. It all starts with the weaver. Working from their own homes, the weaver creates beautiful carpets, knot by knot, month by month. In the 1970s, the founder, N.K. Chowdhury, started selling hand-knotted carpets, setting up two looms in his own home. The founder focused ruthlessly on one critical capability, creating and serving a community of weavers. The first challenge is that all weavers were from the untouchable class. So all my family members, they try to stop me, but I can't see the difference, how they may be untouchable. This differentiated Chowdhury from his competitors, usually independent and unreliable contractors, treating weavers more like a commodity. Over the next 30 years, the company grew from 2 to 7,000 looms spread across 700 locations. Business was growing like the wild wildfire, but some, something is wrong. I have very, very little time to go, go to the villages as, as I was going, going, going before, because now I have to run a global business. That's a pretty classic <coughs> dilemma for founders. Do I spend my time professionalizing, adding new capabilities, or do I double down on my original insurgent mission? Chowdhury knew he had to do both, but his focus was to get back to the front line get back to listening to the weavers. So many solutions started coming from those frontline people. They are not only weavers. They have wonderful qualities within them. Some of them are wonderful mobilizers, quality controllers, teachers. So Chowdhury introduced a whole series of new initiatives to unlock the untapped potential of his weavers. The renewed focus on weavers like Archana resulted in a huge number of new leaders emerging who could help Chowdhury with the insurgent mission. I mean, just listen to how excited Swati is about mentoring Archana. She had confidence that I can do anything in the world. It is a very inspirational statement for me and challenge for me that how can I make her you know, how can I help her to grow with the organization? And as Swati and other leaders began to listen to the weavers, they realized there were huge new growth opportunities for Jaipur rugs. Some of them were creating carpet for 25 years, 30 years, but they never saw the final product. And from that, we initiated the weavers engagement program. They bring all the weavers together and they talk to them about how their carpets connect with the consumer. And this gives the weavers a tremendous sense that they're part of something bigger than just the months they spend with a single carpet. So we really encourage them to see that we are part of a big family. And I found within a few months People are more positive, more connected, and there was a big, big change. As Chowdhury began reading Bain's research and blogs on founder mentality, the one thing that became incredibly clear was that this recommitment to the insurgency could lead to the next wave of growth and innovation. When I started reading those blogs, it was like a magic. A great example of this type of innovation is that Jaipur Rugs is now having the weavers design many of their own carpets. The designs created reflect the weaver's surrounding. Through the rug, the customer has an insight into the weaver's life. This whole decision to have the weavers design their own carpets has resulted in major design awards. Let's just look at the story behind the Differences carpet. The Antar rug, which means differences, was designed by three artisans and they were not exactly getting along with each other. So the pattern you see on the bottom of the rug is not very aligned. As they became more friendly, the pattern on top of the rug is much more harmonious. The success of these weaver-designed carpets has led to an explosion of creativity and innovation. 
In fact, designers from the West are now coming to Rajasthan to get inspired directly by these weavers. That was incredible to see the actual looms in place. Amazing, the sheer artistry and mastery of the craft. The knotting process is astounding, but it also freed me into thinking anything is possible with making these rugs. How we can translate our art pieces and our ideas into a rug that's loomed knot by knot. It's going to be art, art that you can walk on. Jaipur Rugs makes the customer experience exceptional. When you buy the Weaver's Collection, you get an incredible amount of information about where the rugs came from, about the yarn spinners, and the weavers who made it. In a recent initiative, yarn spinners and weavers have created postcards to be included in these information packs. And now consumers are starting to write postcards back. In business circles, we talk an awful lot about consumer dialogue. Jaipur Rugs is a great case study of a real circle of communication between weaver and consumer and back to weaver. As Chowdhury talks about his insurgent mission, he often says, we don't sell carpets, we sell a family's blessing. And this was all about his dream to connect the weavers directly to the customer. This is probably best symbolized by a loom that sits in their head office. Every yarn spinner, every weaver, every customer who comes there stitches a little bit on the loom. And the final carpet, which will take years to make, will be a symbol of how the artisans and the customers are linked and woven together. Jaipur Rugs is founder mentality in action. I mean, it's a pretty simple parable. Define your insurgency, focus on a few critical capabilities, connect your front line directly to your customers, and start a conversation, and then have faith that growth and innovation will. That was just a short intro to Jaipur Rugs, and of course, we'll hear more from NKC himself and share. Uh, so I just give you the floor to share your story now. Thanks, thank you. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. I would like first to thank Teal around the world for having me here. I would like to quickly take you through the journey of my life, which I call the University of Hard Rocks of Life, because it was only after my college that my real education began. I started my career selling shoes from a little soap that my father have started. I realized that there was very little room to grow and I was offered a full-time job in a nice, nice bank. I declined the offer as I wanted to do something of my own where I could enjoy what I do. So about 44 years ago, I started with two looms in my own house in a small town, Churu in Rajasthan, as a contractor manufacturer, producing rugs for the larger exporters in Jaipur. I borrowed two head and dollar from my father to buy two looms and an old cycle to travel to weaver houses and day-to-day -day work. The beginning were humble, yet filled with challenges. One of the first challenges I faced pro, was from my own family members. In those days, rug weaver belonged to the untouchable class and were not given the same social standing as others. Given the strong class system in India, interaction was not only discouraged, but was looked down upon. I faced a lot of resistance from my own family members and neighbors, but I could not understand how could they may be different human beings. So I fell in so much love with weaving and weavers that I used to take my lunch and eat with weavers and their families beside the loom on which they made their carpets. I used to spend entire day working with them and learn the basic of weaving. I discovered and realized that some of the most beautiful rugs in the world were made by those who did not have the most basic rights in the society. The only encouragement I had from was my wife, who not only supported me, but also sometimes provided the viewers with tea and food. 
within two years, I established ten looms in and around my village in Rajasthan, and thereafter I further expanded as a contractor for next eight years. After that, I moved to Gujarat to start my own export with my brother. In 1990, I moved to Gujarat, where I stayed for eight years. In this period, I had the opportunity to train and develop a network of about 15,000 tribal men and women in the art of rug weaving. Initially, I faced challenges working with the tribal, who were not only welcoming of outsider, but I knew. that love empathy and respect could make the relationship much easier just in a matter of 3 4 years they started to respect me as their guide my interest of living in villages and being close to the nature made it easy for me to connect with the tribal people and grow this business during that time I was blessed with three daughters and two sons. In my society at that time, even now, girls get less priority than boys. My British friend Ayla Copper suggested that girls are often more efficient and more receptive. So my wife and I treated all our children equally. Sent the girls to study in America, though our family tradition. strongly disapproved of sending a girl abroad alone i encourage all my children to take a deep interest in the american lifestyle so that when they finish their studies they would have a better understanding of the customer needs i told them that i considered myself as a weaver and thus they were the daughter of a weaver and the weaving has become the biggest enjoyment in my life and they should never forget this one thing i learned was to appreciate the wisdom that people at the grassroots generally have women manage home food children and budget and still take time to weave the carpets they are probably some of the best managers in the world in 1999 i separated from my brother and started jaipur rug from zero i also established a company in usa to move close to the customer initially i had very little knowledge of business and finance as i spent my time with the viewers in the villages as a result i had to face a lot of problems and it was one of the most challenging moment of my life where i had to learn the things which i did not learn in the past 20 years of my life i had already been very successful in creating a good name for myself for quality and quantity in the carpet weaving but once i started again i had whose problems and failures for the first 3 years then i started to introspect what went wrong and i realized that my past success has created a false feeling of goodness within me i realized that good is the enemy of best and i had developed a mental disease called euphoria i was highly success at working with the people at grassroot but now i had to learn new skills and change my leadership style to run a global business i observed that it was me who was restricting the growth of the organization as i was everywhere in each decision so i have to remove myself my perception from every decision and use natural talent wisdom and capability of the individual to see the things as they are not as i want them to be i was an ice cube 
so losing myself was like melting the ice to become water at it can be flexible and take any shape to become simple enough to let natural growth happen up to now i had relied on the entrepreneurial skills and leadership quality of the uneducated people and they have gained a deep understanding of our business but to support the rapid growth of the business i had to hire fresh and experienced educated professionals but everybody put me upside down i learned that knowledge is power but too much knowledge and knowledge gained without practice develops ego practitioners sometimes get the skills without having the knowledge to break the ego of our professionals i started a learning initiative which we named the higher school of unlearning the higher school of unlearning we made the professionals work with our older uneducated managers in different departments to develop a deep understanding of the business processes i also took the challenge to teach them the basic fundamentals to manage the business and people like ours which they never learned in their school and colleges we worked on the philosophy of finding yourself through losing yourself finding yourself through losing yourself the more i lose myself the more i find myself in 2004 we set up jaipur rak foundation to bring change in the life of our artisan by nurturing the human connection at the grassroot we do this by creating program on skill development leadership development and social development this in turn brought mindset change empowering our artisans to develop the understanding of the customer needs in early 2008 late professor ck palar number one management guru at that time called me and asked me if i knew who he was i replied who does not know you but i was extremely surprised why he has called me he said that he wanted to do a case study on our business model and then i said that what we do is very simple if you write it no one read it even my neighbors does not know me but he explained me that our global supply chain is very unique by connecting the poorest of the poorest with the richest of the richest by enhancing capability at the grassroots after talking to him i realized that we have done few things right to reach where we are i attribute the success of jaipur rag to some of the following factors first is our vertical integration and nurturing capability of the people at the grassroots there are 60 processes in carpet making from buying of raw wool to the final delivery all these processes are highly influenced by us that gives us a competitive advantage by having quality control at each levels and by developing the skills of uneducated people working at different levels headends of our viewer have risen to become either managers in our business such as branch manager or became independent entrepreneurs secondly passing or more benefit to the viewers while hand noted carpet fetch good value in the market viewers who are the real creator receive only of a fraction of this because the middleman involved in making and selling the carpets i realized this early on 
and started going directly to the viewers, eliminating the middleman. We could therefore pass on more benefit to the viewers, sometimes hundred percent more than what they earned through the middleman. It was a very challenging process. As I was taking someone business, and I was constantly threatened by many contractors. One day, a politically powerful contractor came to my office with a gun and asked me to leave the Gujarat. But I knew that it was the frustration of his failure. I believe that innovation will be a key for Jaipur to grow further. I saw our artisans as human, but my daughter Kavita went a step ahead and saw an artist in them. In 2014, she began a initiative called Our Viewers. In she began an initiative to include our viewers in the product development and design process to unleash the creativity of the talented artisan we work with. And we termed it Man Chaha Project. Man Chaha in Hindi means freedom to design so that the artists put their heart and soul. Today, the Man Chaha Project has won over nine global awards. In 2017, one of our artisan Bimla Devi, who has never been out of her village, never went to school, surprised the world with her simple yet magical designs that went on to win the German Design Award. My future vision for Jaipur Air is to create the best artisan proposition where each and every of our artisan will be convert into the artist and shall be connected with the world of design. This shall allow the artisan to a greater share of the wealth they produce. Now I want to share with you another unique initiative which we are implementing called Founder Mentality. I think this new research by Ben and company will be a new management science in the future. The research explains that out of 1 million founder driven company, only two company crosses $100 million in revenue. Rest of the company remain small or die because they are unable to define and communicate the core of the business, founder's vision, and his style of working. Over a period of time, they stop listening to the front line, working with the customer and grassroots people of the organization, which the founder understood when he started his business. Some of the highly successful companies that have able to retain founder mentality are Nike, Starbucks, Legos, and Ikea. When the second generation doing the business, new capabilities are added, which gives a huge scale to the business. However, the second generation is disconnected from the front line, which leads the complexity in the business. Thus, the growth is not profitable and sustainable. Third layer is of the professionals who are, dist who are distant from the both, the grassroots and the customer. This leads a huge gap in the business. Founder mentality is a pure science that helps explain and bridge this gap. The research says that front line at the grassroots are the doer. They are the kings. They are the heroes of the business. While people at the corporate office sitting at the top are thinkers. Thinkers job is to make doers life simpler and to help them to enhancing their capability and skills. And doer pay the salary to the thinkers. 
founder core values his leadership style his way of working should be documented and his values should be made into non negotiable so that the next generation of leaders and professionals don't dilute these values founder began his journey with early heroes who helped him in scale the business this should also be documented this will help the next generation of leaders and professional to scale up the business by maintaining the simplicity and the focus authority and decision making powers are concentrated at the top of the organization pyramid when we turn the traditional hierarchical pyramid upside down the front line at the grassroots and viewers are empowered with greater decision making authority and freedom of action while the thinker job is to make the strategy pulled up not the push down which is a democratic way of doing business furthermore i see jaipur as a platform of connecting end consumer with artisan so that they can both emotionally connect with each other this shall lead the utmost level of dignity of our artisans in 2019 raj sisodia founding member of the conscious capitalism movement in his book healing organization explained how a business can heal the society and customer together in his book he published a case study on jaipur ad on the power of innocence and how jaipur is healing the customer and the society i believe innocence could be the future of the management science innocent people have the power to see and understand the things others can't this will transform the business around the world i often say we don't sell carpet we sell family blessings we sell experience we sell stories and our carpet is free when our carpet when our customer buy the carpet they gets the blessing of our artisans and our artisan receive back the healing which comes from the customer happiness and warmth this complete the circle and we call this totality i would like to end by sharing a, a small experience i had when i was in college i had a very strict college professor of business administration and he came to my classroom and called out my roll number and asked me to stand i got scared as why he was asking me as i was a very disciplined student and i started to think what wrong i might have done then he took out a test copy and showed to everyone in the class saying look at the answer this boy has written the question was what is the definition of business and what i replies was business is next to love business is next to love it is the creator and preserver of civilization the professor then said this boy will become a different businessman one day thank you very good nkc thank you so much so just a reminder to those of you in the call there is an opportunity to ask NTC some questions in the chat you'll see the link there and if uh, there isn't a question that you immediately want to ask then there are a number of questions which have already been posed and you can vote on those questions and bump them up the list but NKC thank you such a personal message and top of the list here a question for you what is your biggest life lesson what is your biggest life lesson what is the biggest life lesson like the biggest sabse bada seek ke hain yes my biggest life lesson is that 
love yourself and love whatever you do i just like it so much um this it's so simple it's so beautiful and yeah it's it's foundational and uh yeah um thank you nkc for that one uh another question that we have here could you talk more about what you said you said good is the enemy of best and that's a lesson that you had to learn could you talk more about good being the enemy of best yes generally i talk a lot about that <laughs> <laughs> because it was a great experience in my life that uh, generally when we are working when we are doing something we create our own identity and after we create our own identity we are always afraid of losing that identity so generally we forget about our responsibilities and and we are driven by the fear of losing that identity so what i have seen in my whole life that if we do anything to show to the work that how how good i am how good my work is it is the inferiority complex it means i am driven by the inferiority complex then what should be the answer the answer should be that i must only do the things which is my passion which i enjoy most i should not do the things to to get that good feeling from the other 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 person really good yeah thank you thank you so uh, using yourself as a reference rather than using other people and being in touch with who you are being an important thing for success yes right yeah, yeah. good good okay um could you <clears throat> come in maybe further here because we have a question about how good business connects with spirituality and i guess here spirituality is in the broadest context but could you talk about how you see good business and spirituality connect what i think that the there are the basics of life and those basics are the science to live happily and the same basics also apply in the in the business so i was experimenting on these basic things in my life and after i have business i started experimenting in the in the in the business so i think that spirituality life and business they never be the different things spirituality only only means that following the basics things of the of the nature and what i have seen in my country there is a lot of things people are doing in the name of the spirituality and i always always found that you can't break break down the life you never may be a, you can't do you need not to do anything especially for the spirituality you only need to do the basic basic things so i think the love compassion emotional intelligence heart business can't be survive for a long time business can't be sustained 
and those are the basics of the spirituality i, I love the this it constantly comes back to the heart the the character um the the love as being at the center of of business it's not about cutting edge business techniques it's not about increasing revenue it's not about profit but you keep coming back to this this internal journey um, and that's that's so beautiful you said in uh, as you were talking that you realized that you were in the way and you stepped back in your position you you were you were uh, um you stepped back from your role as leading uh, in order to give, give space more for the business, if I, if I heard that correctly. What advice would you give other people so that they would know when to get out of the way in order to let their business take the next step? I'll just translate it for him. Yes, thank you. I think this is a great, great question. <laughs> and it is very near, near to my heart. That as I told that uh, we create our own identity. And that, that is called ego. And ego is a false image of myself. So when I do something, I always put myself first, my old belief, my old thinking, my old habits. And then I became blind to see the things as they are. It took me very, very long time to know myself, to know myself. 10, 15 years ago, years ago, I realized that consciousness is the most important thing and I am driven by unconsciousness, ego and desire and I have three enemies. Then I started working, working on them and I am very happy to say I want to tell an example of my company that the name of our HR department is Search for Divine Soul. We only interview the people about their passion. Are they searching the meaning and purpose in their life? Are they are highly connected with the values and purpose of Jaipur Rag? And I thank God that we are finding more and more, more people like that. Because when we select these people, we always see that how this person put himself first. So I'm happy to say that these people are not only creating a great future for the Japura, but they are creating a great future for the whole carpet industry. You, NKC, you talked about self-awareness and the, the steps in self-awareness that you had. And I like that because we just come from the, the main room where Josta Block was saying that this is where it began, having that self-awareness, having that understanding and, uh, uh, and birthing something from Absolutely. within yourself. And of course, he also um, mentioned the fact that he was collaborating with you and Jaipur Rugs featured on one of his slides. So it's, it's uh, no coincidence to see the, uh, the same thoughts coming through. Thank you. A question, one more question we have here, and that is, what do you look for um, for further inspiration to keep innovating? Where do you look for further inspiration to keep innovating? When I got the success, money and, and fame, 
I realized that there is something is beyond that. And then I started to think about myself that how I became like a child, spontaneous, innocent, living, living in the present. So when we live like a child, we create an environment of spontaneity, authenticity, creativity. So the people working with us, they can bring their untapped potential in their in their work. Thank you. Um, a, a quick one here, and because it was such a beautiful comment, um, I'd like it. Somebody's asked if you could repeat what you said about um, what business is. And this, I think, is a connection to what you said about love. If you could repeat that again to make certain that the, the message gets through clearly to everybody. Yes. Business is next to love. Business is next to love. It is a creator and preserver of civilization. It is a creator and preserver of civilization. Business is next to love. It is the creator and preserver of civilization. Write that in big letters, stick it on your computer, stick it on your wall, meditate on it. This is a key message for us. Thank you, NKC. Okay, so um, how do you ensure Jaipur Rugs continues and evolves beyond you as a founder? How do you ensure that Jaipur Rugs grows and evolves beyond you as the founder? Yes, it is a great, great question. Ten years before we know nothing about that, but we were lucky that some of the very senior partner of Bain and Company globally visited Jaipur and they spent the whole day, whole day with me, and they found that. Jaipur Rug has such great authentic stories which very few company in the world have. So then they started guiding us that they, they defined the core of Jaipur Rug, who we are, what is the core of, core of Jaipur Rug, why we are in this business. And then they started coaching all my five children. And they told them that their job is not to run the business, not to grow the business. Their main job is to take the legacy ahead. Is to take the what ahead? Legacy. Have ah, the legacy, yes. Take ah. the legacy ahead, yes. Ahead. So they define the core of Jaipur Act, define the non, 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 non negotiable. So, and they also helped us to create a culture in the, in the company that we ensure that everybody is connected with the core, core of Jaipur Rag. And we take very special care in the recruitment. We only hire the people who are highly connected with the core philosophy and purpose, purpose of Jaipur Rag. And we are working on that. Bain and Company is also helping us that this legacy not only this legacy will grow more and more and more. And I can see that many great things is coming out. Great. Yeah. And uh, what a beautiful message to, to, to give your children. Yeah. Um, Going to the other end of the of the company and to the artisans, could you explain a little bit more about the self-managing structure that you have at Jaipur Rugs and the role of the artisans in this self-management structure? Yes. 
after as i told you that when i started working on my own consciousness that i realized the biggest problem of my business is me so the more i work on myself the more self awareness i have the better my business can perform so we did so many experiment at the head office and they went very successful then we started to start the self managing teams at the grassroots at the experiments how to create the self awareness among our our viewers because we have a hierarchical system the managers branch managers second is quality supervisor and third is the viewers so we are converting our branch managers into the coaches and we have given three criteria to our viewers zero defect carpet zero wastes and hidden print on time delivery so we have learned from duniya and lisa and so many self management gurus about this that how to conduct the meeting how to teach them so they can conduct the meeting and make their own decision in the team good um the somebody is a little bit upset uh, jkc because they had um uh they lost their the sound quality when you said something about three enemies could you repeat what you said the three enemies were that you mentioned yes unconsciousness ego and desires unconsciousness ego and desires the yes. three enemies good thank you i love this nice interaction here with the audience this is good we've got a small enough group that we can get the clarity we can get things repeated when we need to and i do appreciate you working with us nkc um you started in your last answer today something which nicely rolls into the next question and this is could you say a little bit more about finding your self through losing yourself so a little bit more about philosophy of finding yourself through losing yourself and maybe give a little bit more of an example or a story to illustrate that yes as i told before that the i found that i'm the problem means i'm the slave of my habit i'm the slave of the past so then i thought that how i can teach my people how i can convey how i can communicate 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 my my people because the more they lose themselves if my i communicated them that if they put themselves before the work the decision will be corrupted so losing yourself means not creating your own identity so you can see what other people think think about me so then you are more involved you take more responsibility and uh, i can say that the people like that they are not blind generally people who put themselves first i always say they are totally totally blind they can't see the situation they can't see the opportunity they can't see the other other person lovely thank you your education program has obviously been successful you've invested in developing your teams your staff and teaching them and giving them education do you see other companies copying you in india is this has this been an encouragement to other enterprises in india 
what we are doing in at the grassroots i don't think there so many people are understanding this and doing it in their business but now we are creating master class and we are doing so many things so we can communicate the other businesses in the right things yeah modeling the kind of things that you want and being an encouragement it's beautiful okay we have one more question um there will be an opportunity obviously to for everybody to go to the spatial chat and to go and to meet people to talk to other people in this room about what you heard and what you learned so i do encourage you to go to the spatial chat but before we go there and kasi what is your dream you've accomplished so much in your career what's the thing you're most proud of and what is your dream still ahead my next dream is that that i have got the success in my business profit money and i also got a good fame globally but the dream is that is not the all the dream is to know that those both fame and money is not required there are beyond something which is much much powerful than money and fame that is a great incentive for for us to close out i whenever i interact with you in kc i always feel that i come out cleaner i always feel that i've just had my my soul and my mind washed um and um and that is just such a a beautiful experience so in kc thank you thank you for sharing with us the heart of jaipur rugs the heart of you your vision and your beautiful work uh, it's it's fantastic thank you so much and uh, we wish you well okay thank you sir thank you kal thank you and so if anybody needs help getting to the um the, the spatial chat you can get help at reception okay and go back to reception and they can push you anywhere you need to go mm -hmm.